Hello and welcome to another chat. This one is going to be about the uncrewed service vessels that Ukraine used to attack the Russian Navy in Sevastopol. I think the attack is going to go down in history, like the sinking of the Moscow before. This is really significant naval action and has implications for the future of naval warfare. So I'm a defense analyst. If for those who don't know, I'm H.I. Sutton. I'm going to come at this from a defense analysis perspective. Like my other chats, this is unscripted. You can tell that already, I know. Also going to be unedited. Just a guy talking about something he's aware of. But I've prepared some materials, so let's get on with it. On October the 29th, 2022, the Ukrainian Navy attacked the Russian Navy at Sevastopol. This is a drone's eye view of a warship. We're used to drones looking down at targets. There's been lots of footage of that shared before. It's the first time the world has seen a drone that's on service of the of the sea attacking a, a warship. The, the warship is a Russian Navy frigate. The drones in question are something that only Ukraine operates. Ukraine built, as far as I'm aware. These are what we term uncrewed service vessels, USVs. The media is being quick to call them marine drones or something like that. People don't know what to call them. USV is the, the sort of naval language. At the same time as the drones attack, there was also an air attack. It was coordinated. I think that's also a big deal. And I have to be fair and say that the Russian Navy, although undoubtedly this was a success for the Ukrainian Navy, the Russian Navy did um, have some success in countering some of the drones. This is one being shot up by a helicopter or, or ship and it's exploding. So how the attack unfolded, caveat supply, there's still a strong fog of war, but based on reports and a general awareness of the situation in Sevastopol, it's something I've been monitoring, obviously, for a long time. Let's put it together. So the Russian Navy has a number of anchorages and bases in the area, but particularly two main areas within Sevastopol where its submarines and its service vessels are berthed. To get to those, though, you have to go through a very narrow entrance at the mouth of the harbour, and that is guarded. It's guarded by dolphins, actually, although those aren't particularly relevant against service vessels like this. They, they're relevant against divers. But it's got a boom across it. There's patrol boats and so on. So you shouldn't be able to get inside the harbour at all. Also outside the harbour, there's the roadstead. Um, this is where both civilian ships and naval vessels are often anchored. And you have Russian naval warships patrolling outside the harbour in the general area marked here. Ukraine threw at least seven uncrewed service vessels and nine uncrewed air vehicles uavs at these targets and although as i said this is unconfirmed at this stage it would appear that there were some there's some action both outside the harbor and inside the harbor some of the footage appears to have been taken approximately where the warships were patrolling especially the what the footage of the frigate also at the roadstead there were russian reports that that a ship was hit there and some of the footage and other reports show that some of the drones, probably two or more, actually got inside the harbour. This is quite in, interesting and impressive in its own right. As I mentioned, the harbour defences at the mouth of the harbour should have prevented this. They didn't. The UAVs were also attacking these targets. There were reports that at least two Russian warships were damaged, a frigate, possibly the uh, Admiral uh, Makarov, which is the flagship of the Russian Navy now that the, the cruiser Slava, uh, sorry, the cruiser Moskva, which was a Slava class cruiser, was sunk in April. That was damaged and a minesweeper as well. A survey, uh, sorry, a merchant vessel and a boom possibly also uh, hit. The re reports of a dam being hit, I interpret that as a boom, which is like a uh, the harbor wall essentially. All unconfirmed, but quite successful from a from a Ukrainian perspective. It has a strategic implication, even though none of the ships appear to have been sunk, which is normally how people interpret successful attack. 
this will have an effect on the Russians' ability and focus on it, on defending Sevastopol. It makes Sevastopol feel less and less safe. And that's going to influence how the Russian Navy deploys its, its, navy, its warships going forward. So I think this will go down in history. But of course, as I say these words, people are no doubt typing comments about how it's not the first drone attack of this nature. A lot of history will go back to the fire boats of the ancient world. Obviously, the American Civil War had various types of sort of sneak attack that were some way similar. But for remote controlled boats with explosives, you've got to go back to World War One. 1917, the Germans used remote control explosive boats to attack a Royal Navy warship off Flounders. It was unsuccessful. In many respects, it was too much too soon. But it's an interesting precursor. It's the first example of a remote controlled service vessel attacking another vessel. It didn't have radio control, so instead they had a cable coming out the back of the vessel. It was commanded from the shore, so it could only hit things within sight of the shore. But really advanced and interesting for its time, unsuccessful. During World War II, there were many explosive boat designs, but they were all crewed. They all had a pilot in them. The Italians are most famous for them and used them with some success, but of course also the Japanese, the British and the Germans. More recently, explosive boats have started to become uncrewed again. And in particular, the Houthis, which is an, uh, has power in Yemen, have been using them to attack the Royal, Navy, uh, sorry, Royal Saudi Navy and also UAE and, and potentially other um, merchant traffic in the Red Sea. In particular, they used explosive boats to attack a a Saudi frigate in 2017. There's a screenshot of an explosion that was moderately successful. And they also used them to attack the Saudi Navy and tankers um, in the Red Sea in 2022. You'll find very little information about this on the internet, but it's something that's known within defense circles. And that's just a file image of the type of ship that they hit for a Navy ship. The Houthis have several designs. The first ones were just power boats that were converted for remote operation, almost certainly with a lot of Iranian help. But they subsequently built some purpose-designed purpose, uh, purpose -designed explosive boats. These are different from the, um, from the Ukrainian example because they have a pilot house. They have somewhere for someone to sit. That is to allow them to be you know transited with a pilot it's just easier for the the Houthis the pilot then gets out and gets into a control boat before the um the uncrewed vessel then makes the attack so it's remote controlled using um using uh radio several versions they vary in size basically the Houthi uncrewed service vessels exposed boats are unusual Nearly every service, uh, uncrewed service vessel project of any Navy ha up to this point has been very different. They've been focused on defensive operations and things like intelligence gathering. They've generally been unarmed and where they have been armed is been primarily as a defensive um, sort of setup. So, for example, harbor defense and things like that. Some have been advertised with missiles of various types. And of course, some defense analysts undoubtedly, I'm 100% I'm sure, have been thinking exactly along the same lines as the Ukrainians. But in practice, navies have not been designing, building, purchasing those types of uncrewed service vessels. Instead, they've been focusing on other roles. So what the Ukrainians do, however obvious it is, however much we say we already knew it, in reality, it's the first time we've seen something like this. What is it actually like? Well, we know a little bit about these because one of them washed up on uh, Sevastopol Beach in September. It washed up in Omega Bay, which is outside Sevastopol. Um, the harbour itself, as you know, is where the naval uh, bases are, is over there. The headland that it's on is military relevant, but it appears that it just washed up um, having failed to in its mission. 
a few photographs were taken of it before the Russians blew it up because it had a bomb on it. So they obviously had to had to dispose of it. It's about 150 nautical miles from Ukrainian controlled coast, a little bit further from Odessa itself. We can unpack it a little bit. Um, we can't see everything inside it, of course, but we can determine that it has a water jet. There's possible Starlink antenna. That's the leading theory as to how it is controlled. And then it, underneath the hatch is probably an engine from a jet ski, I would suggest. And it's got an electro-optical camera, essentially, on a pedestal at the, at the front that is trainable so it can turn around. And that's why the, the film footage you've seen of these attacks, sometimes the camera is spinning in all sorts of directions. The warhead is probably underneath the camera somewhere. And at the front, you've got uh, some uh, fuses, detonators. Talking of the propulsion, we can be confident that this is designed around a jet ski uh, propulsion. Did some analysis had some help so thank you to those people but did some analysis and tied it down to a particular brand of jet ski as well you can see the similarities here it's essentially a sea do branded jet ski you they even left a sticker on where the, the no foot um, mark no step the jet ski itself we can't be exactly certain which model because more than one current model has that that propulsion but it's probably a GTX top end jet ski. SeaDo, a Canadian company, these would be um, easily accessible in uh, Ukraine on the civilian market, secondhand, whatever. We can't be certain whether all of the devices have the exact same jet ski model. They might just use whatever they have, but at least the one that's seen was using a SeaDo uh, jet ski, a uh, water jet rather. At the front, you've got the two fuses. These are interesting as well um, because they are of Russian design. We can't be sure exactly what warhead is inside the vessel, but it's possibly an FAB 500 bomb because the fuses are from uh, an FAB 500. At least that's the, the best um, identification we currently have. This bomb Although it's Soviet designed, it's also in service with the Ukrainians as well as the Russians. So it's not unreasonable that the Ukrainians would put it on the front of the, the vessel. So going back to the October 29 attacks, can we be sure that the exact same type of service, uh, uncrewed service vessel was used? We can, but before I show you how, just point out on the horizon, there's a screenshot, you've got a frigate, it's a possibly the Admiral Makarov, which was reported as as damaged. You've also got a helicopter, probably a Mi-17 HIP. Um, that is using its machine gun to shoot at the drone, and that's what the ink, the uh the splash, the incoming fire is. The, the warship is also shooting at the drone. I believe that this particular drone was probably destroyed by the helicopter or warship, more likely warship. Is it the same drone? Yes, it is. The The features that you just see at the bottom there, the nose view of the drone, match exactly with the, the type we've seen before. So we can be pretty confident that the drones used, several of them, were exactly the same or as good as the same as the one that previously washed up. So I think this is really significant. As I mentioned I, I think people are going to be quick to accept that this is part of warfare, an inseparable part of warfare. And it's easy to, to convince ourselves that we already saw this coming. But in reality, it is a new development. The way that they're being used in mass, this level of sophistication, at the same time, they're also smaller and cheaper than previous explosive boats. We can see future wars will have large numbers of these as a persistent threat, constantly threatening if you like the low hanging fruit, the the roadsteads and the naval bases and forcing the defenders to adapt to them. Individually, they're not that dangerous. They could of course sink a warship, but it's more that they're gonna change the shape of um, warfare in the sense of how you have to defend against them. I think it's gonna be very, very significant. And for all those many uncrewed service vessel projects around reconnaissance, mine countermeasures they're all still relevant 
but now I think people will be looking to this use of them as probably the main role of uncrewed service vessels. Okay, so thank you very much. If you liked, please like, subscribe, please share. As I mentioned, this is unscripted, pretty obvious. Um, but thank you very much.